Welcome to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the show that brings you man-on-the-street interviews, celebrity guests, groundbreaking research, and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. Hello, I'm General Dentist Dr. Kavitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to TheReasonsWeSmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kavitko. Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile. I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is episode number 627. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, we're going to welcome Dr. Mark Pagano after his week-long IV sedation training. Before we get started, let me remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kavitko. And if you please go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. Also, all past episodes complete with video are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com and we're streaming live on Facebook. I want to remind you, and I won't be able to remind you uh, too many times this morning because we have a jam-packed show. So remember this, you can have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist in about 10 minutes. If you want to pre-program your phone, it's 614-459-9769. 614-459-9769. That'll be in about 10 minutes. Okay, so as I mentioned, last week we were without Dr. Pagano. I had to run the office all by myself, which, uh, well, I'd done a lot anyway, but uh, kind of missed you. <laughs> no, yeah, I miss being here too, but it was nice to get out of the office for a second. So you were off doing your IV sedation training. You were in Dayton. What was the name of the hospital? Um, it was actually called Good Neighbor House. So it's a small clinic that uh, they basically, uh, their patients are people who don't have insurance or who are the working poor. Um, so we were able to do some cases on them. Oh, neat. Okay. I thought it might have to be some kind of a discount because they knew you were learning, right? Yeah, there's a discount. Yeah, in general, they just give discounts to the patients there. So it was just, you know, we didn't have to deal with, you know, trying to convince people to, to you know, buy the extra, do the extra charge for the sedation. So it was nice and easy. All right. So I know you've come back all invigorated. I know that you're probably tired. Can you take me through the week? What was the first thing that they had you do? So uh, last Monday. Last Monday, yeah. So the first part of the day was, you know, just basically them going over how the clinic works and just their thought process on dosing and um, IV sedation in general. The main doctor there was, you know, there was an anesthesiologist and then a doctor who's been teaching IV sedation for, she said she was the second longest in the country to be teaching IV sedation. So they gave they gave us their dosing protocol and then um, we learned how to do venipuncture, practice on each other, and by mid-afternoon we were sedating our first patients. Wow, that's pretty quick. So the person that you're talking about, is she a short woman? Yeah, yeah, Dr. McGuire. Yeah, she is an awesome, awesome, awesome dentist, awesome sedator, awesome surgeon. She was truly inspiring. I loved working under her. Okay, because I met her. I met her at a seminar not that long ago, maybe about a month and a half, and I agree. She's a really nice lady and all that, and the only thing, I'm sorry, the only thing I can think of to say if we had the right person was her height. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep, she was a small lady, some, a lot of energy, yeah, and she actually said she remembered you. We had a discussion about it. She said that you were asking about the course or something, and you guys had a conversation. He said if, if she remembered right, the, and she described you, and I think she nailed it right on the head, so I think it was her. She said tall? No, 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 she didn't say tall, no. <laughs> okay, okay, well, that's, it was worth a try anyway. All right, so you were sedating the very first day. Yeah, we were sedating the very first day. We worked in partners the very first day just so we can, you know, kind of feel comfortable at least having, you know, a little bit, uh, a little backup. But, um, you know, by day two, we were working by ourselves, which is something they tried to do new this session that they weren't doing previous sessions. They said people in the past were complaining that they wanted to, uh, you know, feel what it was like to do it by themselves more. Where in the past, they were doing it a lot of teamwork the entire time. So, you know, by day two, we were by ourselves. And by yourself, you mean you were the only doctor there doing 
doing the sedation. There wasn't somebody helping you with the sedation, but there was someone else doing the dental care, correct? Yes, yeah, there was somebody else doing the dental care, and of course, the um, you know the leads of the course were um, in the same Bay Area, just in case if anything went down and there was any kind of you know emergencies. Mm-hmm. So I know there's a life insurance commercial that Alex Trebek does, and he talks about the three P's of life insurance. Maybe you've heard it, and he says the first one is price, the second one is price, and the third one is price. So I'm going to assume, tell me if I'm wrong, that the three S's of sedation are safety safety and safety would you agree <laughs> oh yeah i would agree 100 percent if i like I, I would say at least half of the day every single day was talking about um, safety and what can go wrong and being able to manage those situations which was intimidating at first but as they kind of walked us through how they approach um, people becoming you know hypoxic or you know any kind of emergency situation that would arise kind of became easier throughout the week and by the end it kind of seemed second nature that's how much it was really pressed in us okay and hypoxic means that not enough oxygen. Yeah, not enough oxygen. Yeah, that's the number one issue that could go wrong with any kind of sedation in general is just, you know, not getting enough oxygen. And that normally can cascade into other events afterwards, but it normally comes from being hypoxic. So how long were some of the procedures that you were sedating someone for? So were you, did you have to keep them sedated for 30 minutes, 60 minutes, hour and a half? What was it? Or was it all over the map? It was all over the map. Uh, so we were, there was four of us doing four individual sedation cases at the same time. And there was one dentist. So, you know, I, one of the times I was the first one, you know, with my patient unconscious, but she didn't get to me until, she didn't even start the case until an hour and a half through the patient being sedated. It was a crown case, two crowns. So like by the end of the procedure, it was like three hours that I had the patient sedated for. Okay, and how did you guys monitor their breathing uh, audibly? Do you have a Bluetooth uh, thing in your ear? Did you have a speaker? How was that? Uh, so we use, there's a couple different things you can do to check if a patient is um, breathing. Um, they kind of wanted us to be able to know all of the methods, but we, so like they had different cubes with different setups, um, you know, with some monitors or without, so that we were aware of, you know, all the ways to detect whether or not a patient is ventilating. But we use capnography, and then if not, we just used a precordial stethoscope to see if they are breathing. You just put it right above their sternal notch and make ensure that the patient's breathing. There's no Bluetooth, not as fancy as this office. We just had the plain old stethoscope putting it on and listening for auscultations in our ears and then also the capnography machine as well. Those are the main ways we used it, I would say. Okay, so you talked about the precordial stethoscope and for those of you that don't know what that is, if you feel in your neck, there's this little soft area right below, right in the middle and you can put your finger in there. There's a ligament on either side and so it's kind of soft and fleshy and we put our little monitor there and we can listen to you breathe. The other thing you said was capnography which measures the partial pressure of oxygen and of CO2, correct? Yeah, 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 of CO2. So it's ensuring that um, when they're blowing out that there was an exchange of uh, gases and that CO2 is leaving um, the patient's chest so you know that they are breathing. Right. So you can put oxygen in, but if you get oxygen out, it means they didn't really breathe, did they? It was just like putting air into a balloon and getting the same air back. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. So you want to be uh, aware of, you know, what is coming in and what is also, you know, going out of the patient. Okay. All right. So you had uh, your very first patient was sedated for three hours. No, that was one of, that was like my third patient. My first patient uh, was a full mouth extraction and they were supposed to be sedated for a while, but uh, we got a little nervous about um, the safety of the procedure because the patient said he had asthma, but didn't have his inhaler, his rescue inhaler, which we want present during every case if you have asthma in case if anything goes wrong. And so we were kind of nervous that, uh, because the patient was kind of spitting up a little bit and coughing. And when he was unconscious, he like told us something about his medical history he didn't before that, you know, when he coughs, he normally produces um, some phlegm like every time he coughs. So we got a little nervous and discontinued the case and um, brought him back a couple days later and told him he had to have his inhaler on him. Okay, so now how did you discontinue the case? Did you give reversal agents or you just let him wake up? We just let him wake up because at that point it had probably been about a half an hour since we last gave him any meds. And um, about a half an hour after your last meds, you're kind of able to um, start waking the patient up and seeing if they're able to be discharged and at least get the test started to see if, you know, they're able to um, eventually leave and leave safely. Right. And in the last show, last time we talked, we talked about how somebody, even though they're out, 
they're aware, right? They can still open. They can try to um, do whatever you're asking them to. And so did you did you try that? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We definitely tried that. Yeah. We, you know, you, the patients are conscious partially and, um, they'll kind of talk during the procedure, but then, you know, afterward they don't remember anything at all. Like I, I, I remember thinking like when this was starting, like, when I got my wisdom teeth out, I, I always assumed that I was put under, completely put under because I had no recollection of it at all. And then as the course went on, I was like, you know what? They probably just did moderate sedation and I was somewhat conscious during it and I just had no recollection of it. So it feels like you're put under because you just truly don't remember anything that happened. Right. And it's just as good as being put under. Oh, it's just as good. It feels like it. Yeah. It feels like, you know, that you were fully put under once you wake up, which is what everybody kind of wants. And maybe safer because you don't have to be intubated. Yeah, definitely safer. We don't have to maintain an airway. You know, we just have to, you breathe on your own. And our job is just to ensure that you are breathing on your own. Okay. So we're going to do Dr. Kavitko's question of the day next. And I'm thinking from what we've talked about so far, Maybe a good question would center around the gentleman that you let wake up and said you're going to reschedule. Uh, he had a rescue inhaler, and so the question is going to be probably, if you have a rescue inhaler, should you bring it with you to your IV sedation appointment? I think that's a good question. we got to educate them out there. <laughs> the answer is going to be yes, right? It's definitely going to be yes. <laughs> All right, so we, we're not doing the contest right this minute because we have to have you listen to this. You're listening to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. We're about to do Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. We'll be right back. This station will not be held liable for any contesting during The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Participation in the contest allows Dr. Kavitko to record and broadcast your name and call. One winner per household. Prizes are non-transferable, cannot be substituted, and are subject to taxes and fees. This station cannot be responsible for the inability to enter the contest, whether due to equipment malfunction or telephone difficulties. All decisions Decisions of Dr. Kavitko concerning this contest or eligibility are final. And now it's time for Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. Okay, and you're going to have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist. They'll be delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. Today's question is a true or false question. Here it goes. If you have asthma and are having a medical procedure done under IV conscious sedation, you should bring your rescue inhaler. Is that true or is that false? Remember, the winner is going to receive those free flowers. The number to call is 614-459-9769. That's 614-459-9769. So go ahead and call now. You won't believe it, though. I want to hear your mind. And there's nothing that's hidden in the world tonight. She said people don't take the time. Hey, people don't take the time. Hey, what's going on? It's Keith Carlos, winner of America's Next Top Model and star of Chocolate City 2. You can look for my smile courtesy of Dr. Kavicko on the CBS television network where I play Danny on the hit soap opera, The Bold and the Beautiful. Stay tuned to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavicko, the world's most interesting dentist. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavicko, general dentist and host of The Reasons We Smile radio and roadshow. Did you know that you no longer need to visit several different dental professionals to get more complete dental care? We handle everything from cleanings and orthodontics to restoration, implants, and smile makeovers, all in my office. Get the most advanced technology and procedures available today. It's more complete dentistry. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Johanna, and I've been a dental patient at Dr. Kavicko & Associates for over 10 years. I would really recommend Dr. Kavicko for your family's dental care. They're friendly. They're always there to help me. I feel like family when I walk in the door. It's clean. It's comfortable. Even if I have to bring my kids, they have a great playroom for them. I know when I'm with Dr. Kavicko, they are taking that extra time to make sure that I'm going to be the healthiest I can be. They've been great. I love them. Call Dr. Kavicko & Associates today, 614-262-9500. Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko's here, and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard. Okay. 
Okay, we're back. We're doing Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. Okay, Dr. Pagano, do me a favor because we're doing Dr. Kavitko's question of the day, and we have callers on the line. Pick a number between one and four. Uh, let's do four. Okay, last week you did one. This week you're doing four. Okay, sorry about numbers two and three. <laughs> anyway, all right, so number four happens to be Tiffany. Hi, Tiffany. How are you? Tiffany, can you hear me? Oh, there you yes, are. Yes, hi. Hi, how are you? So, do you have the answer? It's true. That is true, right. All right, Tiffany, well, hey, stay on the line. We need to get the information where to send those flowers from DeSantis, okay? All right, thanks. You're very welcome. Okay, if you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kvitko. This is The Reasons We Smile. It's episode 627. I'm here with Dr. Mark Pagano. He's my new associate. He spent the entire last week learning to become IV sedation trained and IV sedation certified, and now you're certifiable. <laughs> yeah, certifiable. <laughs> yeah, we have, Ohio has a long list of certifications that you have to have and you know things you have to do at the training and pass, and yeah, the, I'm certifiable after leaving the course. Not in a crazy sort of way, though. <laughs> no, not in a crazy sort of way. <laughs> okay, so which means the next step is you have to get with the state board of, a uh, dental board, correct? Yeah. The pharmacy board. Uh, it's the dental board, yeah. Okay, so you get the dental board, you say, I've just taken this training, I now am able to become certified, and I need to make arrangements for that to happen, and that typically is, or not typically, that is a situation where they will send an oral surgeon, right, a retired oral surgeon maybe, and come to the office, and they will watch you do a sedation, they'll ask you questions during, tell me about that, what'd they tell you? Uh, they told us, well, they just wanted us to be as prepared as possible. You know, they have a lot of stories coming back from people who leave the um, program. And, you know, they have, you know, some horror stories from some site visits and, you know, some others that, you know, went real smooth. So they just try to get us as prepared for, as possible for anybody that will walk in the building to basically certify us. It's not as black and white for the criteria, but they, you just have to get that surgeon that comes in the office to pass you from what their knowledge is. Okay, and they're going to be looking for things like emergency oxygen. They're going to be looking at your emergency kit, the emergency drugs you have to have on hand. And tell me, what other things did they let you know or did they not? Uh, yeah, they'll walk you through a lot of uh, emergency scenarios as well because uh, you have to sedate one patient in front of them and we, you don't want to, them to even get close to going into any kind of emergency situation. So they'll kind of ask you a lot of questions like, what if this happens? And you know, you'll tell them, oh, you give them this drug. And they'll be like, what if that doesn't work? And they just kind of keep pushing and making sure that they have every single corner covered in terms of you being able to uh, know what's going on during an emergency situation and every kind of situation that can occur from somebody being sedated. Okay, did they give you a list of emergency drugs that you should have? Yep, they gave us a list of emergency drugs. They gave us a list of protocol even that you can keep in your office uh, in case of emergency situation arises. Um, you know, there's a lot of numbers and dosage that a lot of people might know off the top of their heads, so they give you a nice little packet that you can keep nearby to ensure that dosage is safe um, during an emergency situation and you're not going, you know, based off of, you know, your training that you might have had years and years ago. Right. And so that's good. No, that's, and that's going to help us because that probably helped me polish up and we'll get out my emergency kit and compare it to the one that they said <laughs> that you should have. Yeah. Oh no, we'll compare it for sure. Yeah. Cause there's a lot of stuff that they say they wouldn't do, but if, you know, in a last case scenario, if something's, if somebody's sats are dropping, you want to be, you know, have every possible um, solution to fix, you know, any kind of emergency that arises. Right. Now I was told that one of my first responses should probably be calling 911. Oh, yeah, for sure. Calling 911 if it's something that you feel like uh, you can't manage yourself or, you know, that they need treatment as soon as possible, it's always call 911. Yeah, I think I was taught it's, it's good to call 911 first, then go about your business of uh, supporting them, making sure they have good oxygen and that they're breathing and whatever emergency drugs you feel are indicated to, until the uh, experts, so to speak, get there. Yeah, yep, yeah, exactly, yeah. They always say, you know, point to somebody else and tell them to go call 911, and you are in charge, and so you have to stay calm and make sure you're directing everybody so that the situation is managed as well as possible from, you know, a medical standpoint. Okay, yeah, all right. So I think what we're going to do now is we're going to go to a break. When we come back, I think I want to hear a little more about the emergency drugs, and I want to hear a little bit about um, kind of your uh, take on what procedures you might think would be good to do this for, okay? Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited to share. Okay. 
Again, you're listening to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko and Dr. Mark Pagano, and we'll be right back. You can't take me as I am, not just a little bit. You're too much for me. This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko. Estás escuchando con Dr. Kavitko aquí en su sesión favorita. Hi, I'm Dominique Reigert. Like what you hear? Why not use the show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of the Reasons We Smile Radio and Roadshow. I've been honored to help several famous people get a perfect smile, like Keith Carlos and Dominique Rygaard from America's Next Top Model, and Ted the Golden Voice Williams from right here in Columbus. Isn't it time you had a celebrity smile? It costs less than you might think, and most of the time, it can be done in one visit. A new smile can make a world of difference. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Kavitko, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Where's my glasses? Okay, we're back. If you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is episode 627 of The Reasons We Smile. We've been spending it talking to my new associate, Dr. Mark Pagano. And uh, before the break, we said that when we came back, we were going to talk about some of the emergency drugs that that he was taught to use and compare them to what I've been using and why you use them and when you use them. So uh, let's talk about what's the most probably important one that they taught you about. Uh, The most important emergency drug to have for sure is um, the reversal agents for the uh, sedatives that you use. So that's flumanzanil and uh, naloxone, um, you know, because if we're giving sedation and we're putting stuff in your body that can potentially cause respiratory depression, we want to be able to have a reversal agent in case, um, you know, you potentially have a little bit over sedation. We can give the same dose and even an initial dose to anybody at any given day and it can have a different effect and it's going to so you know to have those you know right next to us um, is super super important yeah so naloxone is also known as Narcan yeah so a lot of people you know has a lot of press on it lately you know a lot of emergency responders just carry it on them nowadays um, to to reverse uh, opiates yeah I carry one of those masks for doing CPR and I'm beginning to think I should have a little vial of naloxone (laughs) in in my pocket too yeah it seems like the standard of care is kind of across um, healthcare now. So it's like so prevalent, but it makes sense considering you know the current climate of opiate uh, you know abuse. Right, and so then the other reversal drug you mentioned is flumazenil, and that reverses the diazepam like Valium and Ambien and uh, what else? Um, midazolam and what I'm trying to think. Halcyon, that's, right, that's Versed, right, right. Mm-hmm, Halcyon, lorazepam, all of those um, benzodiazepines. Right. Now the nice thing about when we're doing it in the office is we know what we've given the patient. We know how many milligrams. So we can gauge the reversal drug based on how many milligrams they've been given. Unlike uh, an EMT who comes across somebody on the side of the street who's passed out, they don't know what they've taken. Oh, yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, it's nice that, you know, we keep track of our dosing and you often know the culprit. Assuming the patient didn't take anything before they walked in the office, you often know uh, which one caused the respiratory depression. You know, it can be by, you know, what was the last drug that you gave or which one did you give a little bit more dosage of. It kind of just depends per case, um, but we normally base it off of our dosing, you know, depending again that the patient wasn't taking something that they didn't tell you about. Right. And so I want people to know that this may sound scary and it may sound dangerous because we keep talking about bringing people back and reversing, but we're monitoring every second, every five seconds that we're not waiting for somebody to get into distress. We're just looking at it and going, oh, maybe they're a little too deep. Let me give them a little bit of this, you know, or maybe they're not deep enough. Let me give them a little bit of that. It's really, it's not like these mini emergencies, right? 
Yeah, no, it's not like every patient, you know, because you'll have amnesia of the procedure that you woke up and like, we won't tell you that we reversed you eight times from respiratory depression and you were close to death. This is like, we're talking 1% of the cases, if even, if even that, like that something like this would happen. But obviously I think everybody would want their doctor to be prepared for any kind of situation like that. It's a little bit like when an airline pilot has their annual retraining and the instructor their job is to kind of throw a lot of distressful situations at the pilot so that if it really happens, they'll be able to handle it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's just uh, they want you to be prepared as best as possible. It's not like, you know, this you're going to come into the office and expect that, you know, anything like this is going to happen to you. It's very, very, very rare. Right. And so you had patients that you sedated and the, I saw one you said was they got two crowns. What other procedures were being done while you were sedating people? Uh, full mouth extractions. There's a lot of extractions. Some just, you know, plain fillings. Patients don't want to be awake for, uh, you know, even some fillings, which is fine. We want you to be as comfortable as possible. We use it so that you're not anxious during the procedure. And my last one, I think, oh, was a full-blown patient had a huge abscess on the side of her face and was crying the whole time and no other doctor would see her. And she said this was her last resort. So, you know, we were able to make her as comfortable as possible while she was going some th through something painful, like draining a huge, huge, huge abscess on the side of her face. And it was drained externally like a big zit, right? Uh, yeah, it was actually drained both ways. A lot of draining came out when we were extracting the teeth and then, you know, we did a little incision on the outside as well to ensure that oxygen was getting in on both sides. It could drain on both sides and that huge abscess would eventually die. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty neat. Pretty, I mean, it's, I don't know how it gets that bad in some people, but if you've ever seen it like I have, it's just amazing, all of the pus, all of the stuff that comes out of there. Yeah, no, for, for people who like things like Dr. Pimple Popper, it could be a little bit exhilarating, but it's you feel bad for the patient because they are in a lot of pain. Once it gets, don't let it get that bad because it's going to hurt even when we're trying to have a solution for it. Right, and the last thing I just want to say is you mentioned that woman who said she was at her last resort, and we see a lot of those people here who other offices that just can't handle, it's not their fault because some people, if you're that infected, you don't numb up because of the acidity of the tissue fluid, right? It's acidic now. And so we tend to be that dental office of the last resort for a lot of folks who've been hurt multiple times and everybody they go to swears they're not going to hurt them. And sure enough, they do because they didn't get numb enough and there was no sedation offered, right? Yeah. No. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And we, and when you're going through that pain and, you know, we want you to be comfortable and that's why we love that we offer it in this office. Awesome. So I think we have to stop there because I think we're out of time, but I think what we want to do is maybe we'll have a follow-up show where we actually talk about uh, the different situations that can happen and the drug that we would give somebody. But in the meantime, we'll have to put that on hold because I really am out of time. All right, Doc, I really appreciate you, uh, first of all, taking the course and getting yourself certified, and secondly, spending the time with me to talk about it. No, it was an awesome course. I have no regrets. You know, despite the price tag attached to it, it was still 100% worth it. <laughs> okay, awesome. All right, thanks so much. Okay, and uh, as Dr. Pagano mentioned, it was a very, very expensive course for him to take, so kudos to him for making that commitment to providing actually uh, comfortable dental care. And those of you that watch the show uh, on YouTube or on the reasons we smile.com, you'll see these, you've seen these pictures that have been scrolling by and I wanted to highlight one of them uh, for those of you that haven't been watching. And it says, why only dream of having a beautiful smile when you can dream while getting a beautiful smile? Isn't that awesome? And by the way, that same thing could be applied to, you know, why only dream about having teeth that don't hurt? when you can dream while they're getting fixed, you know what I mean? So it's, um, it's a very, very powerful uh, thing that we do. I think that it actually, um, you know, it's what sets us apart from other dental offices and we tend to attract then, um, and it's okay, folks, we, we attract the chickens, we really do, but it's okay because we can take care of you. You know, we, um, we do actually uh, make that effort to make sure that you're, you're uh, truly comfortable and uh, I have this feeling that the reason a lot of people are afraid of the dentist is uh, the ones that have been hurt, oftentimes they're not always hurt because the dentist wasn't caring. They're hurt because either they don't num numb up quite as easily or stay numb long enough or get as thoroughly numb as you should. And so I always expect that you're going to be harder to numb and keep numb uh, than the other folks out there. And so the sedation really is the key. That's what allows us to get past that point where we now can treat you comfortably and just like everybody else, just like everybody else that walks in the door. Okay, so it's looking like um, 
like I said earlier, I guess I truly, truly am out of time. <laughs> My producer's giving me that zero sign. You got zero time, guy. Anyway, <laughs> don't forget to follow me on Twitter. It's at Dr. Kavitko. Please visit my office Facebook page and like us. It's Dr. Kavitko and Associates. Remember that all past episodes, complete with video, are available at thereasonswesmile.com. Be sure to tune in next week and every week right here on your favorite station. Goodbye. Carly Red from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the hit show on VH1, urging you to tune in next week with my dentist, Dr. Kavitko. If you're interested in learning more about this and other dental health topics, go to thereasonswesmile.com to access full episodes of Dr. Kavitko's show. If you'd like Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist, to speak at your next event, please call 614-262-9588. That's 614-262-9588. Or send an email to speaking at 